People love Valve games. It doesn't matter what genre they take on, what platform the game is released for, or even when the game came out. Pretty much every Valve release is met with universal praise, and every single thing they put out is the talk of the town for years to come. The only problem is, the rate at which people want to play Valve games is very high, but the rate at which Valve makes those games is very low. It really doesn't matter how many times Valve has explored a genre, or how many times Valve makes a sequel to one of their games, it's never going to be enough and people are always going to want more of it. The only problem is, Valve isn't going to do that, because Valve doesn't make games, Valve makes money. There's really just no longer any incentive for Valve to make games at this point, and they've been pretty open about that being the case. Gabe isn't going to sit here and tell you that Half-Life 3 is coming soon, because he knows when it's actually coming. Uh, never. So, what happens when people want more Valve games, but Valve makes it abundantly clear that they aren't going to make any more Valve games? They settle for the next best thing. Clones. Overwatch copy TF2, Valorant copy Counter-Strike, and League of Legends copy Dota. These are three of the most popular games in the entire world, and they basically owe their entire existence to Valve. What's weird about all of that, though, is that there's one Valve title that doesn't have an extremely successful clone to its name, despite being one of the most popular games that they've ever made. Left 4 Dead. Ask anyone about Left 4 Dead, they'll tell you that they're two of the best games ever made, and they change both the co-op and zombie genres immensely. And while their impact can be felt in just about every co-op game ever, from Payday to Deep Rock Galactic, there aren't really any good games that you could describe as true Left 4 Dead clones. But, luckily for me, there are some really, really bad ones. Today, we're going to take a look at games that aren't just inspired by Left 4 Dead, but outright rip it off and do a pretty bad job of trying to do that. In true Rat Lobber fashion, we're going to start out the worst Left 4 Dead ripoffs video with a Left 4 Dead ripoff that honestly isn't even that bad. Codename Cure. What's the best way to describe Codename Cure? Uh, it's like Eastern European Left 4 Dead, maybe? It's a linear co-op zombie game that's free on Steam, and it's actually decently fun for what it is. There's no crazy story or interesting characters like in Left 4 Dead, but there is a series of pretty unique maps in which you spawn, kill a bunch of zombies with your awesome-ass dual-wield pistols, uh, plant a bomb, kill more zombies, and then you go back to the start of the map before the bomb detonates. Then a cool cinematic place. The zombies, from what I can tell, are just like Counter-Strike bots that have been given knives and reskinned to be zombies, which is pretty funny because that is literally exactly what Left 4 Dead was going to be when it was still early in development. There's a surprising amount of depth to Codename Cure, and while the classes and mechanics it puts forth aren't the most unique thing ever, I will say that adding a bomb timer to the end of each campaign, and then making the player move really, really slow when their health is low, is kind of genius and makes the game feel really, really intense in certain times. At least way more intense than a Left 4 Dead clone should ever feel. Some of the weapons are pretty cool, like this Galil and this shotgun, but honestly, at their very best, Codename Cure's weapons kind of just feel like Gmod guns. Which makes me realize that basically this entire game could probably have just been made in Gmod, and it would probably have 10 times the amount of players that it has now. It does at least have a workshop, which opens it up for expandability beyond just the default maps, and there is some really cool stuff in here, uh, like this wave-based Halo 3 ODST map. This is cool. Codename Cure is like Left 4 Dead 0.5. It's janky as hell, and there's honestly not a lot to it, but it's free, requires zero prior knowledge to get into, and it's kind of fun. If you want a co-op zombie experience in the Source engine that actually has a similar atmosphere to Half-Life 2, unlike Left 4 Dead, Codename Cure is your best bet. It's like the Counter-Strike source of the Left 4 Dead series. Does that make sense? No? Okay. The Anacrusis is a game that I honestly just feel really bad for. It's easily one of the most earnest attempts at making a Left 4 Dead sequel on this entire list, and maybe ever, but honestly, it just falls so flat at delivering that. It's still in development as we speak, and it's being made by Stray Bombay, a brand new game studio spearheaded by Valve veteran Chet Falasek. This guy was responsible for literally some of the best games of all time, and is partially to thank for the insane amount of high-quality titles that Valve put out in the late 2000s. So, if anyone is worthy on trying to follow up Left 4 Dead, it's this guy, a guy who literally worked on Left 4 Dead, and that's what he was trying to do with the Anacrusis. It's a linear four-player co-op game that tries its best to recapture that Left 4 Dead magic, but in space instead. Just like Left 4 Dead, there's a bunch of wacky alien types like uh, grunts and brutes and fucking goopers. Honestly, there's nothing really too interesting to say about the Anacrusis special aliens, but this little flasher alien that literally just makes the game bright and actually blinds you in real life is genuinely a pretty cool concept for a special infected, 
and I have no doubt that it'd probably fit into Left 4 Dead 3 pretty well. Besides literally that one thing though, uh, the Anacrusis really doesn't have a lot going for it. The weapons are really samey, the levels aren't very good, and in general, taking a zombie game known for its incredibly well-designed characters and enemies and turning them into generic Unity aliens isn't going to go over well with anybody. The most common feeling I got when playing the Anacrusis was, damn, I'd much rather be killing zombies right now than whatever the hell this is. The levels are honestly just kind of disorienting, and it's impossible to tell one map from another or really make out any distinguishing features between them. I guess the original Left 4 Dead kind of had that problem to some extent, but they more than made up for it with their incredibly diverse and unique cast of characters. The Anacrusis cast of characters consists of, uh, these people, I guess. See, when I look at the cast at Left 4 Dead 2, I go, wow, this guy is clearly a mechanic, this guy is clearly a dirtbag, this guy is clearly an athletics coach, and this woman is clearly a black woman. Characters in the Anacrusis are kind of just nothing people. I have no idea what any of these people do, or how they act, or why they're in a 70s spaceship shooting aliens. For a game that has one of Valve's best writers at the helm, it's kind of weird that the Anacrusis just has a complete and utter lack of any actual writing. I don't know what else to say about this game. I really do want to like it, and I think it has some potential. It's just a shame that there are zero redeemable elements to the game at all. The weapons are boring, the characters are boring, the enemies are boring, and the maps are also boring. So, what does the Anacrusis have going for it? Uh, if you squint at this guy, you might accidentally think that it's the Fallout guy and that the Fallout guy is in the game, but he's not. He is not. Back for Blood. I'm not going to spend that much time on Back for Blood because you've probably heard about this game extensively, but I don't know if there's ever been a bigger letdown in gaming history than Back for Blood. Everything looked like it was lining up perfectly for a Left 4 Dead successor. It was a new co-op shooter by the guys who invented Left 4 Dead, and not only was it not some stupid alien garbage that nobody cared about, but the developers came right out and said that this was supposed to be the next Left 4 Dead, not just another co-op shooter. But, instead of delivering on that promise, they delivered a boring game with really unmemorable characters, and a weird trading card system for some reason. I think you could lock me in a white void room for one million years, and I don't think I'd ever come up with an idea quite as stupid as using playing cards to affect my Left 4 Dead playthrough. More than just the weird modern game design stuff that gets shoved in the back for blood though, it just fundamentally wasn't good and lacked all of the soul that made Left 4 Dead 1 and 2 so great. Left 4 Dead 1 was really cool and dark and gloomy, and Left 4 Dead 2 leaned into the cheesy nature of zombie horror, and they both did it really, really well. Back for Blood tried to match Left 4 Dead 1's atmosphere, did a bad job at it, and then put a nasty ass fungus all over the map to try and make up for it somehow. I definitely am glad the game exists though. If there's anything that demonstrates just how powerful the demand for a new Left 4 Dead experience is, it's Back 4 Blood. Back 4 Blood was by all means a successful game, and even though most people were disappointed by it, even the most lackluster, watered down Left 4 Dead experience was enough to get this game 1500 daily players, which is triple what the original Left 4 Dead has. And uh, and, and 1 16th of what Left 4 Dead 2 has, so good job on this game guys. Now, uh, I might be a bit biased here, but Left 4 Quake just might be the best Left 4 Dead ripoff of all time. Left 4 Quake is exactly what it sounds like. It's a total conversion mod for Quake that turns it into Left 4 Dead. Oh yeah, and it's also exclusively available on the PSP for some reason. I used to play this game like all the time on the bus ride to school, and I would somehow convince my stupid ass friends that it was really an official port of Left 4 Dead to the PSP. Uh, it's honestly not even really a game, and it's kind of just like walking around this empty map and shooting two zombies at a time. It kind of sucks, to be honest, but they went to the effort of trying to remake the Left 4 Dead UI, which is very hilarious. Also, it literally came out before Left 4 Dead 2 did, so I guess that makes Left 4 Quake the actual Left 4 Dead sequel. It's cool, it's charming, it's buggy as hell, and it's a product of its time. Nowadays, if a kid needs to be stimulated, he'll just pull up 10 hours of drooling baby videos, and he'll be fine, but me? The only stimulation I had was Left for Quake, alright? And this game sucks. But it's better than Back for Blood, so think about that. Weirdly enough, there seemed to be an effort in 2013 to turn Left for Quake into a full-fledged mod with special infected and everything, but from what I can tell, it's just been completely abandoned and no progress has been made on it in over 10 years. Probably because everyone was too busy playing Nazi Zombies Portable for the PSP, because that game, that game was actually cool. I think it's probably pretty clear at this point that I kind of hate talking about Roblox in my videos, but I realized writing this script that there would be more comments about Roblox if I don't include it in this video than if I do, so 
Let's very reluctantly boot up Roblox and talk about one of the most popular Left 4 Dead clones that it has, Left to Die. What a good name. I fully entered Left to Die expecting to be pleasantly surprised by how high quality it was and how it was genuinely a really good game for Roblox, but it honestly was just really, really bad and I'm pretty sure that every single teammate I had in my short time playing it was like 8 years old. Half the maps didn't even work and only like 5 zombies would spawn at a time, and on the other half the maps, 900 zombies would spawn, which meant that I had to watch my 9 year old teammate, armed with a pistol and motor skills that haven't developed yet, get mauled by zombies while I just kind of walked away and ended up in some equally broken part of the map. Usually uh, Roblox clones of games are genuinely kind of good, like in the case of Gmod clones or Call of Duty Zombies clones, but this game just kind of sucked, and as far as I can tell it's the most popular Left 4 Dead clone that Roblox has, so yeah. Hopefully I never have to log into this website again, and I'm going to ensure that my account gets banned by uploading a picture of the Unabomber to Roblox's servers. So yeah, that's, that's Left to Die. So. Basically, every developer that tried to make another Left 4 Dead was unworthy of taking up that challenge. But what about Valve themselves? What if Valve tried to make Left 4 Dead 3? Would they even be able to pull it off? Uh, no. Honestly, uh, just looking at the Left 4 Dead 3 leaks that came out forever ago, it makes it abundantly clear that not even Valve was up to the monumental task of following up on Left 4 Dead 2. They had a bunch of weird ideas and it was going to be an open world game set in Egypt, and there was like a weird skill tree mechanic and it was going to be on Unreal Engine or something. I, this game was going to be really, really bad and nothing like Left 4 Dead, and I think Valve realized that pretty early on, which is why it got cancelled. Maybe it really just is impossible to follow up on Left 4 Dead 2. I mean, if Valve couldn't do it, who can? As much as it pains me to say, and as much as I want to see another Left 4 Dead game, maybe we're all just better off enjoying the mechanics that Left 4 Dead brought to the table in other games instead of an actual third entry to the series. With that said, I'd like to use the end of this video as a message directly to the Left 4 Dead versus community. You people are insane. You guys, you guys are crazy. You guys are nuts. Uh, thank you. Thanks for watching. I've been Ratlobber. Peace.